Why do I enjoy off-roading? Off-roading is the biggest adrenaline rush you can get at three miles an hour. You're in your own space. You're in your own vehicle. You can just relax. Just let everything go. Okay, we're rolling out. We're at uh, Corral Canyon OHV area. We're all members of Combat Crawlers. Uh, Combat Crawlers is made up of all military veterans, um, all ages, and today we've got with us uh, somebody from the Air Force, Navy, Marines, and I myself was in the Army. All right, so here we are at the uh, the trailhead, you can go ahead and get yourself situated into four low. The first obstacle is not too far away. Sidewinder is a loop that's, I think, around four miles, but it seems to be obstacle after obstacle with uh, little sections in between. Probably the most famous obstacle on Sidewinder, I've always called it the slide. I think that's the nickname of it, and it's a big boulder that you have to go down, um, kind of a slab that you're almost vertical. It definitely gives you a little pucker going over it. Okay, so as you round the corner here, you'll see the next obstacle. And with this one, it's kind of a V-notch with some boulders, so make sure you're straddling the center kind of, and uh, you should be fine. My name is Adri. I am a tech sergeant in the United States Air Force uh, Active Reserve. I'll do landscaping before I get wenched out. Took a wrong line. Turned too wide over the rock and kind of centered out. This is Tink. She's been with me my entire career. She's gone pretty much from every assignment that I've been in. Overseas, stateside, and she's been serving pretty much the military as long as I have, so 15 years. My name is Forrest Boyce. I was a corporal in the Marine Corps in E4. I joined the Marine Corps in 96 and got out in 2004. First time I deployed, nothing happened. It was great, beautiful country, nice scenery. Um, second time I got deployed is when I got hit with an RPG. Um, it crushed my cheek and my nose and my orbital socket, so my eye was hanging down a little bit and my nose was over here a lot. But I ended up with three reconstructive face surgeries and two open septal rhinoplasties to help me breathe again. So the VA kept trying to save my leg for probably a little over a decade. And then after probably the 50th surgery, I asked them to cut it off. And I ended up getting sent to uh, Peter Harsh for Peter Harsh prosthetics if they cut my leg off and I got this great leg. I'm able to walk. Before then, I wasn't able to do anything. I just dragged my leg behind me, kind of like a zombie. My leg is beeping. It does that when I go upside down, like, because I'm a Marine, we can't really tell which way is up or down. So, okay. sorry, it's a joke. <laughs> Some deep ruts on the right side, make sure you try to straddle those. My name is Kevin Kelly. All right. I'm a veteran of the Navy. I spent 20 years. I retired in 2010. I joined in 1990. Um, I was a naval air crewman, a search and rescue swimmer. All right. For what the, some people that don't understand what that is, I jumped out of helicopters and saved people's lives for a living. Retired in 2010. After that, I went to you know work and sit behind a desk, and it was horrible. I miss the adrenaline rush, the going out, flying in the back of helicopter, shooting guns, jumping in the water, doing all that kind of stuff. You, you just get used to it, and that adrenaline is just not there. And then sitting behind a desk, you kind of like, uh, that's kind of boring, and it makes you kind of sad. One of the big things I like about getting out on a trail is it's the excitement. It's seeing the backcountry. Um, I spent 20 years in the Navy, and flying around all of Southern California, I saw it from 500 feet in a helicopter. Now I get to actually get down and see 
this kind of scenery and it's just amazing. It looks so different when you're down in it than it does when you're up at, you know, at 500 feet above the, air, above the ground. So we use channel 22 for our CB because it's, it's a reminder of the 22 veterans a day that commit suicide. It's a really sad statistic. It's something that I think everybody wants to be able to change. Um, finding the right way to do it is, is difficult. And so this is kind of our way of getting veterans out and off-road and in activities that bring that fellowship that they had in the military um, back to their lives. And right after this turn, you'll see that there's a rock right in the center of the trail. I would swing to the right of it if you can, so you don't get high centered on it. Coming off-roading is always exciting for me. It's my happy place. <laughs> I get to go and challenge myself and just being out in nature and in my Jeep with Tink. The first time I ran this trail, it was the hardest trail that I'd ever, ever run. I was really kind of, I, to admit it, I was scared. I, I don't think I ever really get scared. It's just more of that excitement. And that's why I find it challenging. You never want to go off-roading alone anyways, but you want to know that someone has your back. The fact that they're all military makes me trust them more, because I know that they have my six or my back. They're not going to put me in any sort of risk, and I know I'm safe. I trust them with my life, and I trust them with my Jeep. The line is here to try and keep up about halfway up the hill so you're not sliding down, because if you hit that pitch right after the little drop right here, you're just going to slide down. If you get into a situation and say, hey, I need some help, somebody's going to come out there and they're instantly going to start looking at it, processing the situation, and figure out what's going to be the best thing and then you execute. I'm thinking actually you guys might want to come down lower and then come back up, but how I'm going to get from here out, that's a good question. The camaraderie is the therapeutic side of it. You get together and everybody kind of puts their heads together and says, all right, how are we going to do this? It's not just you, it's you're valuing their input and you know they're valuing your input. There's no judgment there. It's just a matter of, all right, here's the plan, let's get it done and move on. Guys, try to, try to get attention on all four corners and if you see me starting to shift weight, let me know. You want this tire? On top of that. Right here. You know, I wanted to have somebody on each corner so that they could keep an eye on that center of gravity to know if I was coming, you know, leaning further than I needed to. Um, kind of stacked some, some rocks and moved a few things over in the corner to make sure that I could get up on them. Glad I had everybody here. That's just another reminder of why you don't go wheeling alone. There, that feels better. It is pretty much about as steep as you want to go with your Jeep going down it. It doesn't last long, but as your back tires crest the hill, um, you know, you're, you've, everything, if you got something sitting in your seat, it's going to slide right off of it. You have zero visibility over your hood going down this thing, so you have to trust your spotter. With this, really, it's a game of inches. Like, you have to be exactly where you need to be. How about, how about my passenger? It's stuck, but it's coming down now. All right, you're on the bottom ledge. All oh, my water in the back seat's falling off. Driver's side's coming down. There you go. Side's running the passenger. Yeah. As you come down, 
there's another boulder and you're at such an extreme angle that your bumper, if you don't turn to move out of it, your bumper will hit and you, you'll be stuck. One of the things that reminds me of being in the military and you know off-roading is I trust the people I'm wheeling with. I know that they have got my back. There you go. You're I, I trust them with my life. You got about a foot and a half to the end. They know I have their back and I know they have my back. They're not gonna do something that's gonna hurt me. All right, they're not gonna do something that's gonna hurt my vehicle. You know that you're, you can trust your spotter. The veteran community is a tight-knit community. Um, it doesn't matter what branch of service you join with. When you get out, veterans trust each other more than they trust anybody else. They know a veteran's going to have their back if something happens. Okay, your weight is back. There you go. Okay, nice and slow. Yep, you got a good line. Your yeah, you should be able to cut it now. But back up? Yeah, if you, can you counter steer it back up? There's one boulder up here, so that you're not. Uh... Okay, now. There you go. Yeah, with no lockers in the stick shift, he's having a hard time. Because, you know, when you have, you know, both wheels in the corners off the ground, he's not, not really uh, moving very well. Straighten it up, straighten it up, straighten it up, driver. Rock crawling okay, is a great driver. outlet. You go slow, you're not going driver. fast, but it's still there, challenging, and then you can still get that pucker factor from uh, the adrenaline rush of just going over a, a, a rock. Yeah. Once I get over the rock or the obstacle, it's, you get a sense of accomplishment. You know, something you can't really get normally. I like to make it a little challenging. Like I didn't pick the same lines everybody else did because I want to challenge myself a little bit more, but I also don't want to make it to where I'm going to break my Jeep. Everybody that's been in the military, you think the same about approaching an obstacle. You think the same about how to get through it, get through it safely, because the whole point is trying to get everybody off the trail. We want to be able to make sure that that vehicle can make it home at the end of the day. I'm not big on broken parts. A lot of guys go out there and hammer it as hard as they can. And, uh, you know, I got to get to work, so I don't want to tear my vehicle up. You invest too much money in it to, uh, to have it break and then you know, using a, an Uber or something, going to work for the next few days, you know, while you get it repaired. Uh, after you round this corner, there's a boulder on the right. You can either choose to be on it or next to it. Next to it, you're going to be off camera a little bit, but that's your option. Well, that looks fun. That is not where we want to be. That's probably the coolest photo you could ever get. <laughs> but not where we want you to be. Not where, yeah. No, okay. Because I'm pretty high. All right, what I want you to do is while you've got your foot as hard as you can on the brake, slowly back off of it. Nice and slow. You're going to come down in your rear and over here. Okay? Nice and slow. Okay? Oh, that's you're awesome. Good. You're looking good. You're looking good. Okay. Okay, you're, you're touching. Keep going back. Okay, now start straightening the wheel. Driver. Driver. Okay. Now, as you come toward me, go driver, okay? Yeah. Back up just about, a little more, a little more, a little more. There you go, there you go, you're looking good. You're looking good. Okay, driver, some more. There you go, come toward me. Okay, that'll work. We'll take it, we'll take it, okay. There you go. My spotters helped me out, so like I said, they got my six, trusted them with my life. Nothing happened to my Jeep, nothing happened to me. 
I spent a lot of time with the TAV program. It's uh, called Turnaround for Vets. It's a program that helps veterans cope with uh, daily life and to teach them a new skill to help them calm down a lot. We teach them how to turn pins out of wood so they can have something to write with so they can show, hey, I made this today. I can still do something besides sit there and you know basically feel sorry for myself. I made something gorgeous. This is what I made today. You know, so I teach people how to make pins and they move on to the next step, making bowls, cups. So we teach them new skills so they can take home. It's not something you're gonna get a job at, but it's something you can do as a hobby to help clear your head. Anytime you can clear your head and create something and give yourself a, a sense of accomplishment, that's a, that's a good plus for any veteran. Are you guys ready to roll? Yeah. All right. With off-roading in a Jeep, or you know, for, for that matter, any off-road vehicle, it's tactical. You're going really slow. It's it's you know like playing Tetris with the rocks, trying to find the right path to be able to move through. There's a lot of thought behind it. It's not just going full bore, and that's what I like about it. When I'm having a bad day, I go out for a drive, and it's clearing. It's serene and it's stunning. Everything goes away, and then it's just you and the road. Especially when you're doing it in a Jeep, because you can go anywhere at any time. Yeah, it's late in the day. We've still got a good amount of miles to go, so uh, we're probably going to kick it in a two-wheel drive. Uh, these trails aren't very difficult from here on. If we need to switch to four-wheel drive, I'll let you know. Uh, we've got some water crossings like the one I'm about to cross right now. And, uh, and basically just, yeah, we're going to try to make some time. Uh, hey guys, I think we need to pull over here. They've got a uh, medical situation. We need a little help. What happened? Uh, so we were riding up. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen that wall. So I was right behind her, and she, she kicks down into the into the rut, and then she comes back up quick, and the bike just freaking toppled over, and she jumped off. Luckily, she was able to push off the bike before it flipped on top of her, but she nailed her side pretty good, and uh, you can see she's got some pretty gnarly road rash. The reality is nobody gets left behind. We're taught in the military that you don't leave a buddy on the battlefield. You pick them up and you bring them back, do what you gotta do. That same concept comes into when you're here at home. If somebody breaks, we're gonna make sure they get off the trail because we're not gonna leave anybody behind. Medical tape or anything like that? Uh -huh. What do we got? We got this right here. Oh, that's perfect. In our association, it's it's just a given. We all know that we're, I'm not gonna leave you behind and you're not gonna leave me behind. Thank you, gentlemen, I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, oh. no worries. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> And now we've crossed onto Espinosa Trail. I'd say our goal is to uh, get up to the peak before dark. These, these quads, they're having a hard time getting up this. This whole area is a soupy mess. Totally screwed. So, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull one Jeep through this next obstacle. And uh, once we get through, then we're gonna toss a toe strap on and help yank their quads past it because um, they're having a hard time getting up this soupy mess that's up there and uh, and then that way they can get on their way. We've never tried this with a quad so we'll see how this goes. Yep. 
Well, we didn't make it to uh, Los Pinos Mountain before sunset, as you can see, but sometimes you gotta adjust your plans and adjust fire. You know, we had the uh, quad riders that we had to help. And then now that we're up here, we've got uh, Adri that uh, decided to get a flat tire and we had to change, but uh, we wouldn't have been able to make it to the top even if, you know, that hadn't happened. But uh, all in all though, I think we're pretty happy with the day. This has been a, a great, beautiful day out, and the sunset, even from where we were at, was beautiful. And uh, now we get a chance to test out some lights. 